Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video we are going over my DLC preparation checklist where I will show you the most important aspects you need to address in order to be more than ready to completely obliterate the DLC and mostly to not feel overwhelmed by its difficulty. But before, I would like to announce that as a celebration for surpassing 30k subscribers, we are going to be giving away 2 Elden Ring DLC copies for the Steam platform. All you have to do is to be subscribed to this channel, like this video and comment in this specific video what is your favorite Elden Ring build. I will give you further details about this giveaway at the end of this video. And of course, thank you very much guys for making this possible. All my videos wouldn't be a thing without your amazing support and feedback. With that being said, let's go back to the main point of the video. First of all, in order to access the DLC, you need to defeat Radan and Mog. I actually don't have any idea why it is required to defeat Radan, but just do it. Radan is not complicated if you fight him at close range. Mog, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated, but if you have the Mog Shackle, you will be fine. This item is located in the lane del source guarded by a lobster. With this tool, you will be able to control Mog to destroy him before the second phase without taking a single hit. Once you have defeated these two guys, technically you are already capable of entering the lands of shadows. However, I will consider having the following things checked to enjoy the DLC way more than suffering it. The most important factor is the game cycle. I strongly recommend you to play the DLC on the first playthrough, cause if you enter the DLC in New Game Plus, it is going to be way more complicated. On this scenario, enemies will have a lot of more HP and they will deal a dramatically higher amount of damage. For that reason, it will be a lot better to craft a new character rather than using your New Game Plus build unless you are an experienced player or if you enjoy a hardcore experience, but I believe Shadows of the Earth Tree is going to be already complicated because of the new buff system with the Scatter Tree Fragments. In my case, despite of having a lot of hours in the game, I will play the DLC with a fresh character to not struggle a lot with the toughest enemies of the DLC. In addition, the mechanic of the stance damage is more effective in the first playthrough and it loses power with each further New Game Plus cycle. Do not overlook the stance damage on this Elden Ring expansion cause it might save your life in multiple situations. I abuse this mechanic in all my videos to make each boss fight easier and for being able to get consistent behaviors on bosses like Malenia or the Elden Beast. Obviously, this will be directly correlated with your build in general. Now, speaking about your build, I wouldn't enter the DLC with a character that is below 150 run level. For a lot of people, it seems like playing at this level at maximum is some sort of a rule, but you don't have to feel forced to do it. Be sure to level up your character as much as you wish so you can craft an optimal build that will allow you to perform decently on the new world. In the past few weeks, I've shown you a lot of builds that are great options to start the DLC and deal a lot of damage to all the new enemies. However, once you enter the DLC, you will be facing new scenarios, new weapons and new challenges where you might need to adjust your character depending on the circumstances of each encounter. Therefore, the most important aspect of your build and the one you need to prioritize will be Vigor. In the majority of my builds, I recommend you 40 points on Vigor cause for the base game it is more than enough even in New Game Plus 7. But in this case, considering that it will be the first time that we will be facing new hardcore enemies and bosses, I believe that being between 50 and 60 Vigor is more than decent. These high values of Vigor will be even more effective if you were a powerful armor set that grants you enough damage negations and of course enough poise. This that might be even more relevant in the lands of shadows because of the fast paced combat we will experience in this new expansion. With enough poise you will prevent your attacks from being interrupted allowing you to consistently hit your targets and keeping the advantage on most scenarios. I understand that for a lot of you guys might be scary to craft a 150 or 200 rune level character in your first run but it is actually quite easy. You just need the golden scarab talisman to increase the amount of runes you earn or some golden pickle full food and once you have completed the base game you can farm a lot of rooms in a few hours with the sacred relic sword erasing the Alvin Aurix in the Mogwin Palace with the skill of the weapon. Or you can duplicate rooms with a friend on any platform or you can just use cheat engine if you are on PC. But in case you don't want to do any of these things, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much rooms and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. In a few days I will be uploading a new video covering the build I'm going to use to enter the DLC and of course I will be showing you my progress in multiple videos and of course once I dominate it, I will be crafting some insane builds with all the new Elden Ring weapons for you. There are a lot of items you might prefer not missing them and those are Golden Vow, a great arrow incantation that buffs your defense and attack power for 1 minute and 20 seconds. Hall of Shabriri, a body buff that increases all damage types by 25% for 45 seconds but that increases the damage taken by 30% as well. Flame Grant Me Strength, a body buff that boosts your physical and fire damage for 30 seconds as well as your stamina regeneration speed. Be sure to have as much time talismans available but not miss the next ones. Ritual Sword and Shield Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Elemental Scorpion Charms, Roaring Winds or Insignia or Millicent's Prosthesis, Axe Talisman, Dagger Talisman, The Claw Talisman, Godfrey Icon, Lord of Blood and Kindred of Road Exultation, All Lords Talisman and Dragon Crest Grey Shield. Be sure to have enough smithing and somber smithing stones to be able to upgrade any new weapon you might be interested in on trying when being within the DLC. The Bell Bearing will allow you to buy as much stones as you wish as long as you have the corresponding Bell Bearing for each type
life and number. You need larval tears to be able to respect your character with Renala each time you need to do it. Be sure to have your healing flask upgraded at max level and max quantity. You can upgrade them with the golden seeds and sacred tears. And do not forget your physic tears, especially the elemental and stamina crystal tears, the stats booster crystal tears and the spiked thorny and stone bar crack tears. Each one will allow you to give a significant boost to your build. If you don't know how to get these items, go to the Fextra Life wiki. There you will find the location of any item you wish to obtain. Now addressing the most important combat tips I can share with you, don't be afraid of playing aggressively at close range. There are a lot of players that complain so much about range option, but the actual meta of Elden Ring is close quarter combat. A simple rule, the closer you are to your enemy, the easier it will be for you to beat it. The truth is that a lot of bosses and enemies have destructive attacks that are more dangerous when you stay at medium or long range. If you stay at close range, you will have an easier time and you will realize how fast you can learn a moveset. Also, as a very personal tip that is most effective for people with similar playstyle to mine, do not play with desperation for defeating the boss. That will only make you feel frustrated quickly. The best you can do is fight each boss with the idea of deeply learning its core mechanics in order to understand the key movements that will grant you the necessary openings you need to fight effectively. Look for the weakness of your targets on the following three main areas. Find to which type of physical damage the boss you are facing is vulnerable to. It can be weak to pierce, strike or slash. Do the same with the elemental damage. It's more than obvious that Mesmer is not going to be weak to fire damage, so try with magic, lightning or even with holy. That'd be nuts. Also look to build up bleed or frostbite. Those two are the only actual effective status effects. It is important for you to understand that the first days everyone will be doing this, looking for new metas, most broken weapons, some cheese methods, so feel free to experiment as much as you wish. And in order to do this without limitation, before entering the DLC, I strongly recommend you to create a backup when you have everything ready. Just right before entering the DLC, when completing this checklist, close your game and back up your save file. This way you can replay the DLC or re-entering it at any point without actually losing the items you used when you tried it for the first time. This is completely safe and you can do it on any platform. And as I previously mentioned, in order to thank you all for your extreme support, I will be giving away two Elden Ring DLC copies for Steam. Sadly, I didn't find a way to do it for all platforms. I thought about gift cards or something similar like CD keys, but as I eradicate in Mexico, the prices are ridiculous in most cases and most of them are for specific regions. So I apologize for not being able to make this giveaway multi-platform. But I promise you guys that in the future, I will be doing something for all you guys, no matter the platform where you play or where do you live. I just ask you for a little bit of patience. But going back to the details, you have to own the base game. I will be giving away only the DLC copies. I believe this is the most optimal as most people with interest in the DLC are players that already played Elden Ring and that own the base game and that already have a little bit of progress. But enough talking, let's get straight to the point. You have 24 hours from the moment this video has been published to leave a comment on this video with your favorite Elden Ring build. Once you have done it, take a screenshot of that comment and send it to my fiance's Instagram on private message with your name or nickname to announce you have won in case you do and a way to contact you. It can be an email address, your Discord or your Instagram. That way to contact you will remain private and it will not be published. It's just required to guarantee that we will contact the actual winner and not any fake account that could search after announcing you as the winner. The link of my maiden's Instagram will be in the description. Every comment that is sent after the first 24 hours from the publication of this video will not participate at all. The winners will be announced in the next video and once again thank you for being a fantastic community. Believe me that if I could I will give you all a copy of the DLC and one tackle. But as that not possible, I will give you the best Elden Ring builds you could have ever imagined. So without anything further to say, good luck and get ready for the DLC. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I will see you in the next one.